Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. In this video we're going to do something a little different today and look at how a perspective drawing like this depends on a method that applies rules of geometry and angle. So all the artists out there who don't like math, this video is perfect for you. This is based on a method called perspective drawing. So before we get into how to actually draw this, let's just look at perspective drawing and what it actually means. You're a person. You have a perspective on things. Things seem closer to you. Some things seem further away. If you notice this has like a cityscape and these power lines. And notice these poles are, are bigger because they're closer to us in this view. And when we look further in the distance, they get smaller and smaller. And the same goes for these trees. Over here we have a bigger tree. And down here we have these smaller trees. It's all about being in proportion and line of sight that we have. Notice this road converges and looks smaller and smaller as we look into the distance at these mountains back here, which look really tiny. But if we were to go up, if we were to go along this road, eventually these mountains would look bigger and the drawing would look bigger. Let's look at the basics of how to do this. So all perspective drawings have a horizon line, which is just like a straight line where the where land meets sky and something called a vanishing point, which is where all the, the lines are gonna be kind of directed towards. So what I mean by that is um, you're gonna be using a ruler and if we wanted to draw a road, we would base it on this point right here. So. So if we were standing at the front of a road, looking at it straight on, we might see it this way. And notice both these lines converge right to this point. So we have our vanishing point. So we're just gonna recreate that first picture we saw. We, we were drawing our road, which is like, kind of like this triangle. And now to draw buildings, we always wanna use a ruler. And this is where you know math comes in. We're gonna be you know measuring buildings um, using parallel and perpendicular lines. So right now I want to draw a perpendicular line to our horizon line. So I'm just gonna take my ruler out, draw this line, and let's say we want the building to be this big. So let's draw another perpendicular line. And now, so we want to give this a three-dimensional shape. So to do that, we're going to be um, we're going to be using our vanishing point. So all the lines from this building are gonna go to this vanishing point, the end point. So here, so depending how big we want this building, so we can draw it there. And then down here, we're gonna wanna do the same thing. And then to end this building off, we're just gonna draw a straight line down. And then we can erase any extras we have here. And down here, we're just going to draw straight across, straight horizontal line that matches our horizon line. Because our, our point of view is facing the side of the building. So we see the building straight on from its side. And that's why it has this three-dimensional shape where every line can be taken back to that vanishing point. So we could keep making buildings like this and decorating it. So I'm just gonna do that here real quickly and you'll, you'll get to see what this looks like. So hopefully from this little quick demonstration with the building, you can, you can see how we use the vanishing point and how we involve perpendicular and parallel lines. And the idea of perspective where something far away is smaller and then slowly gets bigger and bigger, like so. And, and you can have fun um, playing around with the vanishing point and placing it in different spots, drawing different kinds of roads. Um, you can also like draw, you know, some cute windows that follow along with the vanishing point as well. So if you wanna draw a window, maybe we'd do something like this and then we always have we always have parallel lines going down they all face the same vertical direction so just drawing some quick windows and you can do this all the way down in your buildings and you could add you know little antennas and just you know all the different things you might see in a cityscape and you know, just really have fun with your imagination here. So, so we see that already with these perspective drawings, we're 
we're using parallel and perpendicular lines, we're using uh, rulers. So we use a little bit of math. So this is called one point perspective. So it's one point perspective because using this one vanishing point. So this is one point perspective, but in perspective drawing, there are also two and three point perspectives. That's where we're really gonna see some angles. So we're just gonna go over two point perspective today. So, so two point perspective. So two point perspective happens when there's two vanishing points and we wanna see a shape on its on its side by like its corner. So I always like to think of like we have a box and we're looking at it at a diagonal or if anyone knows the Flatiron Building in New York City, it's a very narrow kind of building and you see it head on like this with its corner. We have these two vanishing points this time and this is our horizon line again. So we still have our horizon line. And now we have two vanishing points. And notice um, this box was drawn with respect to these two points. So if we drew out lines, they would align exactly with our box, with our 3D shape here. So that's where these lines came from. So if you're wondering how we can even have two vanishing points, if you think about us as a human, as, as people, so let me draw a little stick figure. So his view, or his or her view, of the world if you think about it, it's a, three, it's a potential 360 degree view, so right? If, if this person turned all the way around, they would have potentially 360 degree view of their world. So if we, if we took that circle the, of, our, of this view and split it evenly among four pieces, so this is our, our potential of our view. Here's our person and what they can see, right? That's like their eyeball or something. So, or their head. So if we split this evenly, so that, that would actually be 360 degrees divided by four, right? Which happens to be 90 degrees. So that means there's 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. So, so there's a difference of 90 degrees between each, between each view. So, so just spaced evenly around us at all times. So if this is a person, they potentially have, they have potentially four vanishing points all around them at all times. Another interesting thing about perspective drawing is something called line of sight. So what this tells us is that at any one point, what we see ourselves, what do we see? What's our angle? What can we see? We, we see up to 135 degrees. So even though there's a whole entire circle around us, we only see like a part of it. So let's say we only, we only see like 135 degrees, maybe we only see this part of it. That would be one point perspective. But at any one time, notice we can take 135 degrees and turn it and potentially have two vanishing points. And the vanishing points would always be 90 degrees apart. So these vanishing points are always 90 degrees apart. Let's, let's first define line of sight. So when I say the two point perspective, these points are always 90 degrees apart. What I mean is that no matter where you place these, they're gonna be 90 degrees apart. So they can, the angle could be come all the way down here or it can be up here. It just depends on, on how we measure it. So let's say we drew a line from, from one of our points and then to find the 90 degree angle to the other point. Notice we can easily do that. So check this out. Notice that these meet at a 90 degree point down here. And that's what I mean by this can be, these are always 90 degrees apart. So even if we drew them close together, we'd be able to have them be 90 degrees apart. I'm gonna show you that on the next page here. So no matter where our two vanishing points are, they're always gonna be 90 degrees apart. And we're gonna see how that changes the picture of our box. Um, so let's see first our two vanishing points. Let's see what it looks like. They're really far apart. So first I'm gonna draw my box.
notice I'm taking the ruler right to each vanishing point. And now we can measure out. So this box is equal, so I'm making each side an inch and a half long. And we have our box. Notice it's a little bit bigger than the box we had on the previous page. So now let's see it's 90 degree angle. So a good rule of thumb to find this 90 degree angle is to split this in half. So the distance between the two vanishing points is nine inches. So we want to go to about four and a half inches. And we just want to split this in half. And then just kind of test out different lines looking for that 90 degree angle between the two. So, so let's just test out this line. And now if we want 90 degrees from this, we'll take our protractor and go to the 90 degree line. So see how this almost pretty much lines up perfectly with our other vanishing point. So we know that this is that these two are 90 degrees apart, these two vanishing points. So even if we, so it's just depending on making this angle bigger or smaller, they're gonna be 90 degrees apart. So now let's look at an example where they're really close together. So first we want to, want to draw our box. So we're gonna draw some lines in the middle. So you can see our box looks super tiny. Could be a tiny building in some kind of model or something. So now let's go look for that 90 degree angle. So we can split this in half. So this is about two inches. So we could split this right here down the middle. And then just look for a 90 degree angle. So it's probably gonna have a much smaller angle, right? Than we had on the last page. So let's just draw a line, see where we end up. So notice this is also 90 degrees away. So these two points are again, 90 degrees away, two vanishing points and totally different uh, lines, totally different distances for each set of vanishing points, but they are both 90 degrees apart. So just to summarize what we went over, we went over what perspective drawing is and how it involves perpendicular and parallel lines um, we saw the field of view and how we as humans and have the potential to have 360 degree view but meanwhile we only have 135 degree view at any one time. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you want to learn more about three point perspective please let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks so much for stopping by and happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!